first, thank you very much for the uh, very kind invitation. Um, and uh, I'm glad to give a lecture uh, for Luc and uh, on a topic which I hope is not too far from one of his uh, manifold interest. And I'm also glad to be uh, able to see him at Bure. So it's a pleasure and also uh, many friends. So I gave a lecture on the same topic uh, very recently, but uh, we made, um, I mean, like a month ago or something, but uh, we made a progress. So I feel very well uh, to repeat part of the um, previous lecture and, um, and then uh, to improve a little bit the, the result we had. So the main motivation comes from the work of Simpson which uh, among uh, many things uh, says the following. So if X is smooth, so first let me look. I mean, on my computer, it's 41. So I have, uh, I can go to 41 after 12, right? So if, if X is smooth projective over the field of complex numbers, then, uh, and we fix the rank here, a uh, natural number, uh, then uh, he uh, showed uh, that uh, we have moduli spaces. Uh, one is called the moduli space, uh, Betty moduli space. So uh, it, uh, the complex points here um, are uh, isomorphism classes of uh, some simple uh, rank one, uh, rank R. I'm sorry, uh, complex local systems. And one of the geometric features of this moduli space is that it is affine. And then there is a Durham moduli space of the same rank. So that's the same thing. The so complex points are uh, some direct sum of uh, simple uh, connections, uh, uh, the whole thing of rank R. And between the two here, there is a Riemann Hilbert correspondence. And the Riemann Hilbert correspondence is a complex analytic isomorphism. Further, he uh, showed the existence of a uh, so-called Dolbo moduli space. And the complex point of it are um, rank R uh, hitching local systems, which are uh, semi-stable of degree zero. And uh, now the new thing in his work, uh, I mean, among many things, is that there is a real uh, analytic isomorphism. And consequently, here there is a real analytic isomorphism. And geometrically, there is one further property of this uh, Dolbo moduli space, which has been uh, used by many people, notably on Gobao Chao. Uh, so called uh, uh, Higgs fabric, uh, Hitching fabrication to an affine space. It has two uh, main uh, geometric fixtures. The first thing is that this map here is a proper map. And the second thing here is that this, this dimension here is just a dimension of uh, the complex number from H0 of X. And then the symmetric differential form, which go from zero, I'm sorry, from zero to R, R being the rank. So uh, this has uh, immediate consequences here. Uh, those geometric uh, facts here is that um, to say that uh, if we look at isolated components in the three versions here, they correspond because those are isolated points and uh, they are called rigid objects. And then Simpson uh, conjectures that uh, rigid objects are motivic. So uh, let me not give a precise, for lack of time, let me not give a precise definition uh, here of motivic, but say uh, roughly that this is a direct cement on um, dense open of X of a Gaussman in system coming from a smooth projective uh, morphism. And uh, recently, very, very recently, this has been uh, recast in a more general context by Petrov, 
who proved uh, using the methods of Peter Scholz that in fact this, uh, this uh, conjecture is a special case uh, of the Fontaine uh, Mesa conjectures. So that's uh, one consequence we can uh, draw from, uh, from the simple, I mean, uh, the fundamental geometry here of Carl Simpson. And another one is that if n is zero, and more generally, if you assume that uh, on X there are no symmetric differential forms, then, uh, then uh, I should put like this. I'm sorry, here. Then uh, this morph is being proper, then the Dolbo modular space is proper, but uh, proper means compact topologically. Consequently, the affine space is compact and consequently it is zero dimensional. So all the M's here are zero dimensional. In particular, in the terminology of uh, Simpson, they are rigid. So they should be motivic. But uh, uh, a while ago, I thought that uh, it should imply more than Simpson's um, conjecture. Uh, not only they should be motivic, but in fact, they should have a finite monodromy. And uh, this has been proved here. Uh, there is a positive answer to the question here. This has been proved by Bruno Bar, Klinger, and Totaros. In, uh, this has been published in uh, 13 is that this vanishing condition here, I'm going to call it vanishing for X. So this means no higher symmetric differential forms. The vanishing condition for X implies all uh, complex local systems uh, have finite monodromy. So uh, this is, of course, an uh, enlightening uh, fact. And uh, we can make here a remark here is that uh, varieties with these properties, there are many of them. Uh, for example, if we take uh, X uh, smooth projective in Pn of dimension uh, sufficiently large, uh, su yeah, sufficiently large, then we have the vanishing condition. This is uh, one condition and uh, this is one remark. And an another remark is that uh, if we take a Shimura variety of rank at least two, then uh, the fact that the domain, then uh, we have uh, that the dimension of all the smoother space spaces is always zero. So that means all local systems are rigid, but yet there are local systems with infinite monodromy. And in fact, there are many of those because it's a Shimura variety. So uh, infinite monodromy. So to force finite monodromy, it's not enough to assume uh, that uh, all local systems are uh, rigid. And uh, now, before going on, let me give a hint. Uh, let me give a sketch of the proof of uh, Bruno Bar, Klingler, and Totaro. Uh, this is a pure application of uh, positivity theory in Roch theory. So the first thing uh, one has to uh, realize is that uh, it is again due to Carlos Simpson, is that due to the fact that uh, all points are isolated, this implies that there are all complex variation of odd structures. So that's the uh, Higgs theory, which is telling us this. So this is due to Simpson. And uh, furthermore, uh, this, is, uh, this has been proved by Katsarkov and so using the associated periodic representation, so in GLR of QP bar, is that if a representation here of the topological fundamental group is unbounded, viewed as a QP bar representation, then this produces uh, differential forms, symmetric differential forms. 
But uh, more generally, and we will come to this uh, later on, in fact, there is a more general result of uh, Michael uh, Groschenik and myself, uh, which says that uh, this implies uh, really integrality. So integrality would be that this is bounded for each P or uh, said equivalently that the representations have value because they are rigid, they have value in GLR of uh, Q bar. And to say that it's unbounded for any P, this is saying that in fact, uh, it is conjugate, conjugated in GLR of Q bar to representation with values in GLR of Z bar. So we have integrality. The, the result here is more general. We will say a word on this. And then uh, the key point is a theorem of Kant's who uh, We will come up uh, again in the lecture later on, which says that uh, now if we look, because it's integral, we can look at the map, which is induced by the local system to the period domain. And then if the image has dimension which is more than zero, then X, uh, the vanishing condition on H is also uh, not true. That means the, the, the image has uh, symmetric differential forms and consequently X has symmetric differential forms. So that's a sketch of the proof. And as we see, this proof is highly transcendental. So the, uh, the problem uh, we can pose here As a general problem is now if we assume that X is smooth projective over K algebraically close, but now of characteristic P, uh, what, what geometric condition uh, forces motivicity and because motivicity is a very difficult concept, uh, we can start with uh, uh, finiteness. And uh, of course, we can, uh, we can pose this question for isocrystals over capital K, which is a field of fractions of WK. We can pose this question for eladic local systems. Of course, L is not P here. And we can pose a question for uh, crystals uh, over little k. That means flat connections. So, uh, so this is a general question. And of course, uh, before I proceed, uh, if we are interested in, uh, in uh, in, in the Eladic uh, theory, so not the crystalline theory, then uh, of course we have, a, we have a general answer here. Uh, if um, K bar is FP bar and X is a curve, because now the Langlands correspondence is going to tell us that uh, the local system is geometric if and only if it is arithmetic. And arithmetic means that it descends to a finite field. So that's a consequence of the Langlands program. But uh, even this consequence of the Langlands program, if X has higher dimension, we cannot answer this question. Once you, one assumes that this is true, but uh, we cannot answer this question. So I'm not going to talk on uh, eladic local systems here, but uh, let me already uh, make a small corollary of uh, the theorem, the analytic theorem here, which uh, on which we discuss. So we have here, so first, before I do this, let me write here a general theorem, uh, which is due to uh, Michael and myself uh, from, uh, from the same period here, is that if we assume, if we just assume that all the, so we are over C here, if we ju just assume that all the smoduli spaces here are zero dimensional, then uh, as I already briefly mentioned uh, earlier on, then we have integrality of all, uh, all local systems here. 
And uh, it, there's a, in fact, the result is more general here, but, uh, but I, I, recast he, I recast it, I apologize, in the context of our lecture here. And uh, now if we go on the Durham side, if Enum lies rigid, then uh, we go uh, to good model of X over C. So let's say X over R, where R is a ring of finite type over Z as usual. And then uh, we can look here at the W point of uh, X over R. And then we can restrict uh, E over W tensor capital K. Then the theorem here is that it is an isocrystal, and not only it is an isocrystal, but with a Frobenius structure. So, um, as I said earlier on, so we are uh, really uh, searching for conditions which should imply uh, motivicity, and that is the background of what I want to explain here. So, uh, let us come back to the problem here, which we post here and uh, discuss just as a simple application of the theorem of uh, uh, Bruno Barb, uh, Klingler and Totaro, uh, discuss a uh, first application here. So uh, we have a first theorem here, which is due to Michel and myself, but uh, now a more recent theorem. So let us assume that X lifts to W and uh, which is smooth projective. Let us assume that we have uh, the vanishing condition. And uh, let us assume that, um, yeah, so the, the first consequence here is that all eladic local system over X here um, have, uh, have finite monodromy. So, uh, in fact, I can, uh, if I want to sketch the proof here, one is, uh, there is nothing in it. I mean, this is the Riemann Hilbert correspondence plus uh, the theorem of the three here. And uh, if in addition, uh, K is FQ here, then uh, we, uh, any convergent isocrystal, for any convergent isocrystal, then there is y over x, a finite et al, uh, which trivial, so let's say h, such that h upper star of the isocrystal uh, is uh, uh, trivial. So for short here, I'm going to say that it has finite monodromy, the isocrystal has finite monodromy, and y is two through, it's not, uh, as I say, it's, it's a very easy um, uh, consequence, but uh, let me nonetheless discuss it very rapidly. So first, the vanishing condition for X by best change, so the vanishing condition, I apologize, uh, implies the vanishing condition for X over capital K. So uh, this implies in particular that uh, if we realize the isocrystals as connections for X of a capital K, then uh, some, uh, uh, if we look at the orbit under the Frobenius of X nabla over capital K, then this orbit is finite. Because uh, as we saw earlier on, the moduli are zero dimensional. And uh, consequently, uh, this is pre-periodic. And if it is pre-periodic, this means that if we replace uh, in abla over capital K, or if you'd like, if we replace the isocrystal by a Frobenius pullback of an isocrystal, it's going to be a Frobenius pullback together with a Frobenius structure on Fn upper star of in abla over capital K. And this implies by the theory of companions and in that direction, this is due to Tomoyuki Abe and myself and also uh, Kedlaya. This implies that uh, there is an eladic local system which underlies the situation. But uh, by one here, this eladic local system has finite monodromy. 
So this solves here too, if we remove, if we drop the condition for uh, co of convergence, not for the isocrystal itself, but for some Frobenius pullback of the isocrystal. But now if we assume that the isocrystal is convergent, the Frobenius pullback is an equivalence of category. So this finishes a proof here. So uh, this is a, it's an easy consequence, but of course it uh, raises immediately the same question. Can we uh, just as a, so to speak, nearly a small uh, provocation uh, without more evidence at uh, this small theorem here, we can ask whether uh, the vanishing condition here over X, but no liftability, implies the same result, uh, the same, uh, same consequence. And here we don't know, we cannot even start. Okay, so this is, uh, this is one part. So uh, now um, I'm going to uh, go to the third part here uh in uh, the list of problems which are here so i discussed already this a little bit this a little bit um but of course uh, under a strong liftability assumption and now i'm going to turn my attention to crystals and uh, so uh, and this is the main part of the lecture so maybe uh, i'll write here crystals over k here, and uh, I will assume so k equals k bar uh, equals f p bar. So I'm uh, assuming that I have a finite field which underlies the situation here. And uh, of course, uh, and we want uh, the recall that uh, we want to um, to find an analog uh, over a finite field of uh, the fact that uh, the uh, vanishing of the higher symmetric differential forms forces motivicity uh, in a very, very strong sense over the field of complex numbers. Usually when we are, so we assume that X is smooth projective over K, usually when we are over a finite field over uh, FP bar, then uh, the, to look at uh, global sections of uh, differential forms and symmetric differential forms, this is not always a very good idea because, uh, because that, uh, we, have, uh, we know that we have pathologies in uh, characteristic P. But thanks to the work of uh, Deligne and Illusy, then we know that uh, if we assume that the variety leaves to W2, so assume X leaves to W2, then uh, we can expect uh, uh, better behaved uh, properties for uh, uh, the shift of differential forms. Uh, and uh, as a consequence for crystals over so little k, that means for connections of rank at most p. So those are going to be the assumption which we have here. So those are really stemming from the work of uh, Luc and an extension of it. So uh, the CRM here, uh, which we want to discuss a little bit, uh, is the following one. So um, this is uh, um, our assumption here. So we have uh, here, we assume that X lives to W2, so X is smooth projective. So we have those assumptions here. Uh, we are going to consider only R at most P. And now we test the condition which I had predicted in, uh, in characteristic zero in this situation. So let us assume that we have this condition, no higher symmetric differential forms. And what does that imply? Then the result is that it implies finiteness. So there is a, a, a given in ABLA, of Frank, uh, I, I, I insist here, Frank at most uh, P, 
uh, which is uh, which has ci equals zero and uh, which is semi uh, simple but semi simple here is just for decoration because uh, I, we can also treat the extensions here but just for the lecture let me assume semi simple then it has finite monodromy in the sense uh, and uh, rank uh, so rank is at um, at most uh, p, but we can prove it so far, as I said, it's work in progress. We can prove it here for rank at least three, uh, at most three, I apologize. I should say rank uh, at most two, this is written, uh, rank at most uh, three, we have only notes. So I should be careful here, but uh, it seems that um, it works. And uh, then it gives, of course, uh, confidence in general. Even so, we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, prove it. So, con so uh, let me write the theorem here: is that uh, if we fix in abla, then we will find here an a y over x, which is finite et al. So let's say h such that h star of in abla is trivial. So that's the theorem here. So uh, in the remaining time here, let me uh, explain how the proof works. And uh, it's only an indication here. Even though it's not completely difficult, it's not, uh, it's a bit technical. So uh, I will start with rank one, which is not technical. Assume that the rank is one. So, uh, but uh, so rank is one, uh, there is not much of theory behind, uh, but it gives, uh, so to speak, uh, it shows uh, what one has to know uh, at the more uh, theoretical level in order to have a chance to argue uh, similarly. So uh, when we have rank one here, uh, then uh, we uh, so then uh, for uh, historical reason i'm not going to denote the connection by inabla but by el nabla then we can look at the frobenius orbit of el nabla so now those of course yields uh, fq points um of, uh, let me write here, pic nabla. Uh, pic nabla of, uh, of x. So now pic nabla, uh, we have uh, the chance that it's really uh, fine, but more generally, um, we, can, uh, we can say that uh, because the field is C1, uh, I, so to speak here, I, um, I predate a little bit uh, uh, in advance uh, what's going to happen later on uh, because uh, FQ is a C1 field. Then it is a case that if we have an FQ point of the moduli, I mean, due to Harder and Arsiman, if we have the FQ point of the moduli corresponds to an object. So uh, we have uh, here uh, its uh, bijection. So we look at this, um, at this orbit. And because points are the same as, uh, as objects over FQ bar, then this orbit is pre-periodic. So now if it is pre-periodic, it's going to tell us that again, we will have uh, here uh, replacing N, uh, N nabla by uh, some Frobenius pullback of N nabla. Then we have, uh, so there is N, such that uh, some Frobenius pullback of El Nabla, um, in fact, is stabilized by, uh, by uh, some Frobenius uh, power, so it has a Frobenius structure. But uh, if we regard here from this information, the information which, is, uh, which it, it implies only on the underlying line bundle, so this implies that we have an equation of the type, uh, let me write n here, fn opostar of l isomorphic to um, fn m, let's say, opostar of l for n not uh, m. So this implies, so let's say, larger than m. 
well, I should say little n here. I apologize. I mean, the little n which is here. So this implies uh, that there is, uh, by looking at the length torsor of rank one, which in this case is just a Kummer cover of degree uh, p to the power n minus one. So the important information is that the degree is prime to p in this case. So there is here a finite etal cover. which kills, uh, which uh, trivializes the underlying coherent object here, such that, uh, so say, let's say H here, H star of Fn star of L is O. But now on this, uh, on this pullback here, we also have our connection. And here we have the trivial connection. But now because uh, the uh, condition here, a vanishing here is uh, um, stable by finite etal cover. This implies, so now we have the trivial shift and we have two connections on it, then, uh, but uh, we have no differential forms on the Y. So there is only a single connection. So this implies here, uh, if you iterate uh, by going from Fn to Fn minus one and, and et cetera, you will find that L it's, uh, H star of L itself is trivial. And then by the same argument, H star of the connection is trivial. Okay, so this is a baby case. So now we address the rank two case. And I will explain the method. I cannot explain everything in the proof, but I will explain the method. So uh, based on the work of uh, Delaney Luzi, which has been generalized by uh, uh, August and Vologotsky, and uh, those two statements here, I mean, first, this one is a local statement, so to speak, on X. We don't have to assume that X is proper or projective. That's the same for the work of uh, August Vologotsky, which is uh, really uh, based on uh, the work of uh, Delaney Lucy, uh, putting coefficients which have uh, uh, nilpotent uh, curvature, and then, uh, so to speak, reducing to the case of Delaney Lucy on the graded, uh, on the associated graded object. Um, so to speak, I mean, it's of course very close what I said. And uh, uh, but so now, is it, is there's a question from Rick. Please. Sir. So uh, dimension smaller than P or dimension plus rank smaller than P, uh, what is the assumption there? Pardon me, I, can you repeat the question? Uh, what are the assumptions on, on X? Uh, dimension plus two smaller than P or something like that? No, no, no. I think I just did rank one, so... Uh, yeah, yes, but X, uh, the, any dimension? I forgot, yeah, I apologize. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, I will always assume that the dimension is smaller than P. Uh, thank you very but much. But you don't assume that, I think, uh, in, in, in uh, August Wolokowski, you need a little more than that. You need also uh, the combination of the rank and the, so maybe the sum of the rank and the dimension of X. So little smaller, even smaller than P, P minus P. Well, uh, I, 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 well, okay, I should check. Uh, at any rate, the, the condition here on the dimension is the one which comes from, uh, no, I think uh, dimension smaller than P is enough, but I, I can check later. But thank you very much. I should have said that earlier on. And check what is the correct, uh, correct uh, condition. Uh, thank thank you. you. So, um, and then, then comes, uh, now uh, coming from uh, from this work here, but now it's uh, really a global statement on X. Uh, that's uh, the notion which is quite fruitful, uh, which has been uh, introduced by Lang Sheng and Su. And uh, in a way, we can say that even though Carl Simpson has zero interest in characteristic P, uh, um, ultimately, 
it is based on an idea due to Simpson. And let me explain, but only in the rank two case. So uh, that's where we are here. So we start uh, with Inabla here. And, uh, and now we really do uh, geometry. So when I say global, uh, uh, I even mean projective. Because uh, the notion of uh, stability, so my stability is absolutely crucial in uh, what I'm going to explain. Uh, and without this, there is no, uh, there, there is no notion in uh, the theory uh, is not done uh, locally here. So uh, let me let us start with Inabla, which as a Doram object is a semi-stable. And uh, with uh, vanishing chain classes. So uh, now uh, what uh, may happen is that as uh, the RAM object it is semi-stable, but uh, the underlying coherent object, that means E, is not semi-stable. So because we are in rank two, then if it's not semi-stable, it means that uh, I have a sub here of rank two and a quotient uh, of rank one, I apologize, and a quotient of rank uh, one. And uh, such that uh, this one is positive and this one is negative. So in the sense of Mumford. So uh, what we can do here is go to the graded associated to this filtration. So of course the graded associated to this filtration produces for us an X bundle. But since the situation here, uh, here is simple, if I really took the destabilizing sub here, then uh, this uh, Higgs bundle happens to be uh, semi-stable as well. And of course, because the chain classes do not change, that is an easy uh, task here, then it has also CI equals zero. Now comes the work of uh, Deline uh, Illusi plus uh, August uh, Voligotsky. Then uh, we can uh, apply in uh, the work of uh, Leng uh, Shenswo. Then we can apply the Cartier inverse operator to this uh, Higgs bundle. So we find E1, Nabla 1. So uh, maybe uh, in order to, to write uh, in a compact way here, let me call it uh, V theta and here E1, nabla one, and then we can go on. But uh, now, because the main thing here is that we keep this, no, this uh, property of semi stability, we are moving in FQ points of the same moduli. So, uh, I mean, of course, we have two moduli. We have the Higgs moduli on one side, we have the Doran moduli on, on another side. So, uh, this, uh, uh, this is called by uh, Leng Schultz was the Higgs Doran flow. So, using that our field is finite, and using the small remark, uh, which is written nowhere in their work, uh, uh, again, that the field is C1, then we have a pre-periodicity. So, um, so let me, uh, so that is, that is the situation. And uh, now let us uh, see what is pre So it has pre-periodicity, so it has a period which I denote, for example, by F, because this is their uh, notation. And uh, let me assume here, in the first case, so let, me, so let me replace, we have pre-periodicity, so that means I'm going to replace, I'm sorry, I'm going to replace E nabla here in the flow by uh, En nabla N, which is the point where we have the loop, where we have periodicity. So this one is going to be uh, peri uh, periodic of period F and, uh, and then I, uh, I, uh, I, I replace the notation by E nabla and then I will make a remark how to go from E n nabla n to E nabla. So let us look at this object here, which I just denoted like this. So we have two options here. Either the uh, P curvature here is non-zero or it is zero. 
and and of course you know if at the, if you go back to complex geometry and if we want to show that our vanishing condition on the, on the symmetric eventual forms implies motivicity is implies finiteness is then in particular the underlying connection is going to be unitary which is to say via the fundamental work of simpson that the associated Higgs bundle is going to have zero Higgs field. So, of course, the concerns here is going to show, even though uh, the theory, the, the, Higgs, the Durham, the Higgs, uh, um, Higgs arm correspondence works differently, uh, intuitively, the first thing we want to show is that the underlying Higgs field is zero. So um, let us assume that it's not the case and that the peak aperture is not, um, is not zero. So then I simplify the situation here by assuming that the period is just one. And then we end up, if we entangle here the definitions, we angle with the cross of the following shape, we have here, E is an extension of M by M by L, I apologize, as before where L is positive and M is negative. And at the same time, the peak of H, which is nil potent, is going to, um, uh, to uh, tell us that uh, we have here, if the period is one, I apologize, here is L. So we have a cross like this. And at the same time, uh, at the same time, okay, let us uh, continue. So um, then uh, we have two options here. So how did I prepare the, yeah. We have two options here. The, uh, so remember that we have our Codara Spencer class. It goes from L to omega one tensor M. So I'm going to analyze this Kodara Spencer class and the method we use, and I think this is really in the spirit of what should be done, is to show that uh, the vanishing assumption is going to force. So the vanishing assumption should force the Kodara Spencer class to be zero. So uh, that is the goal here. And uh, we have this diagram here. So um, first, uh, this is if, uh, so we have two options whenever we have a cross like this. So we have two options. So maybe I'll write uh, bullet points here. The first option here is that uh, this cross here yields a factorization like this. But if we have a factorization like this, if you look and uh, you use the fact that uh, the quotient M and the quotient L are tors torsion free, then in fact, you also have a factorization. If you read the cross in the other sense, you have a factorization in the other sense. So this implies that- uh, Sorry, we have a question in Paris. No, maybe it is stupid because I, I, I somehow got confused about the setup you we work now is in the theorem about convergent isocrystals or no, 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 no. we we are looking at uh, crystals in characteristic p here so we just have connections ah only in characteristic p but then when you use for Benio's pullback in some previous argument uh, there is uh, this is not uh, no no you, yeah i'm sorry uh, if i I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. So let me repeat the rank one case. So here, as I said, the isocrystal over capital K in characteristic zero was done here, but the assumption, we were forced to have an assumption of lifting of the variety to characteristic zero. And then, okay. okay. Then I say, now we start a new chapter, which is crystals over little k. And in addition, okay. I'm going to assume, okay. And then I gave a model of what I want to perform here in rank one. And this is where the Frobenius pullback was, uh, was, um, was showing up because I was just taking the Frobenius pullback of the connections. This is allowed. 
So uh, okay. it's a, like, it's a pull back of the connection. It's a new connection uh, with, uh, the, of course, the peak of the is going to be zero if I take the Frobenius pullback, okay. but this is allowed. And then I was arguing exclusively. No, no, okay, then I understand, I understand. Okay, uh, Can I continue? Okay, okay thank yes. you. So I say that whenever we have a cross like this, um, then uh, we have two options. Either the L factors through F of star of M, and this is uh, the option here one. And the other option is going to say that uh, the composite map from L to E to Frobenius pullback of L is going to be non-zero, and because this is a rank one, it's going to be injective. So those are the two options. For the first option, I can observe that the moment I assume that I have such a factorization, and in fact, if I if I turn the cross, I have a, the factorization in the other sense because the co-kernels here are locally free, are uh, torsion free. Torsion free is enough as a as a as an assumption, and consequently, I obtain that uh, L is isomorphic to f of star of m, but m is isomorphic. to f of star of L. So uh, at the end, we obtain that L is isomorphic to f square of star of L and similarly for M. So I can again take this length ter uh, torsor, which in fact is uh, in, in the rank one case here, is a Coomer cover of degree P square minus one. So let us write it which trivializes L and M. So let's say Y to X, finite et al. It's even more beautiful than finite et al, but that's the only uh, information we we'll retain here from the situation, which trivializes L and M. And uh, now by, uh, by uh, the previous uh, argument uh, on, on which I discuss, uh, then in fact, uh, the connections here, so H of star and H of star of FL are going to be trivial connections. But, uh, and, and, uh, but they, they are subconnections. So that means my diagram is split here and that kills uh, the Kodar Spencer class. But uh, I was assuming that uh, Psi is zero, is non-zero, I apologize. So my Kodar Spencer class is not zero. So this is a contradiction. So now the second case, so that uh, handles uh, this case. The second case is this one. But uh, if I have, uh, so now I go up in the diagram here. So we are looking at this case here. And uh, then I say the second case is that uh, this diagram uh, yields an injection like this, so it's going to yield an injection like this. But that is telling us, so this case here, I apologize for what uh, here, it's going to tell us that the shift L tensor M inverse, in fact, to the power P minus one, and in fact, the power p minus one of each single shift, so either L or either uh, M inverse, is going to have a section. But uh, the Kodar Spencer class being non zero, uh, this uh, gives us a, a non trivial section of the p minus first symmetric differential form. And again, this is a contradiction. So this is wonderful. So that means uh, we perform the first part of our program. This implies that psi is zero. And uh, if psi is zero, then, uh, I'm sorry, if psi is zero, then uh, I, uh, I, spare, uh, I spare you, ah, uh, I didn't say, um, yeah, okay. If uh, psi is zero, then uh, uh, we obtain, uh, so now uh, you look at, uh, Again, I was uh, making a simplified assumption here. Then uh, we obtain that, in fact, uh, Frobenius pullback of Inabla is uh, Inabla. And uh, again, we argue as uh, we did before. We look at the uh, underlying coherent information of this equation. This yields uh, 
And now really a length tensor, I mean a non-commutative length tensor under the group uh, GL2 of uh, F, uh, FP here, uh, because we assume period one here. So we have uh, X over Y, which is, what time is it? It's okay, which is finite et al. And uh, it trivializes uh, Uh, oh, uh, the, the underlying uh, vector bundle. And now we argue again as before that uh, because we do not have uh, um, uh, differential forms, uh, higher differential forms, uh, in fact, uh, one differential forms on the Y, this implies here that uh, the pullback of Inabla is trivial. So, uh, and uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that gives you, uh, that uh, maybe I'm a little bit ahead of time, but this was a standard time. Uh, that gives you the style of the proof here. So um, the in a higher rank, so of course, this is the case here. There are two things I don't want to discuss. The first one is uh, how to go from, uh, because this way we kill, um, we kill one, uh, object in the Higgs theorem flow. And then we have to go to the other objects, but I don't want to enter in the Higgs theorem flow uh, so precisely, so, uh, so this is fine. And uh, the second thing is, uh, uh, this is more serious, is uh, what can we say uh, in higher rank? So uh, this program here could be done uh, at least uh, F equals one here. Uh, uh, case uh, in rank three uh, yields to uh, interesting considerations of possible uh, maps between coherent shifts and not any co coherent shifts which are um, which are torsion free. This is very important, and not uh, any uh, coherent shifts and uh, any maps. But uh, the the upshot here, in fact, I, I ask at some point, uh, Lazarsfeld, uh, coming from a completely different side of uh, algebraic geometry, uh, how to produce sections of uh, co coherent shifts, and it seems to be. Uh, kind of a new um, view on uh, how to produce uh, 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 sections, uh, so how to produce sections of uh, uh, higher rank shifts via connections. So it it's a bit vague here as a general uh, phrase, but uh, okay. So that's uh, the style of uh, the proof. And uh, I thank you for your attention. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, I'd like to come back to this uh, uh, restrictive uh, hypothesis of dimension smaller than T, or perhaps dimension plus one smaller than T. Actually, uh, what could be said uh, without that? So now we have this uh, marvelous uh, result of Dreamsfeld uh, says that uh, assuming only uh, lifting uh, to W2, then uh, you get um, Z mod P grading on the Duran complex. Yes. The, the R category. And even uh, more than that, an action of the kernel of Frobenius and the, the, the bit, uh, bit scheme of uh, ZP. But uh, just, uh, just take that. So it means, uh, for example, that uh, truncations of length uh, uh, P minus 1, from 0 to P minus 1, from uh, P to uh, P plus P minus 1, etc. Uh, are, decom are decomposed. So 
of course, uh, Olga Zorogotsky exploits uh, the, the the old thing, but uh, I don't think anyone has uh, investigated what can be uh, uh, obtained uh, using this uh, much stronger structure on uh, the RAM complex. Yeah. So it's a, some kind of a monster structure because you have this uh, grading and also you have some important operator on, on each part of the grading. So uh, the grading is such that uh, each high corresponds to uh, with I. So this, this is a wonderful thing. And then you have also uh, some kind of uh, an important operator uh, on each of the of the parts. Uh, um, so uh, I don't know how this fits with the. Now you have a pair of an X and an E, and uh, you have the you know, connection, your uh, Higgs uh, uh, connection, and so on. So I, I don't know, but probably something should be extracted. <laughs> yeah, you're right, and. Uh, um... In fact, uh, um, I mean, in a, in, a, in a primitive version, before uh, I knew the, I mean, before uh, Dream, I, I listened to to a lecture by um, uh, Vadim Vologotsky uh, recently, where he was uh, quoting our work uh, with Michelle, our previous work. I mean, uh, the one maybe I can, uh, I should go back here. Uh, don't panic. Uh, um, yeah, so this, uh, um, no, uh, this uh, general theorem here that uh, if enabla is rigid, I'm sorry, you don't read. Uh, the color here, you cannot see the color, but uh, I, I just move the, the pen here. So if Inabla uh, is, uh, is rigid, uh, then, uh, um, then if we look at uh, W uh, point of the uh, base here, uh, the, when, uh, when we come from, uh, from complex geometry, uh, then it's going to be uh, from a size of crystal. So uh, then uh, uh, Vadim in his lecture in Moscow was pretending that our proof here uh, was in the spirit. I mean, there's one part uh, we, which is the same as what you are, you are saying from Greenfeld. He was uh, trying to explain um, a little bit the idea of Greenfeld. So that I cannot say because I haven't thought what I can say is that uh, so far here, we were quite glad that uh, it works here, but uh, we can make it work only in very low rank here. I mean, uh, the, the only, we cannot go anything beyond three here so far. Uh, and rank three is not completely written. I mean, uh, period one is written, but uh, higher period, uh, there's some work to be done. So uh, I don't know, uh, yeah. Okay. As long as I don't under okay. understand uh, here, uh, more, okay. more this general, is a topic, uh, yeah. topic of future, uh, future investigations. Yes. Yeah. But uh, uh, the, the, the um, I mean, uh, Vadim was pretending something like this. I mean, uh, there were pieces I could recognize, but not uh, the whole. Uh, the whole part of the lecture concerning this year. Other questions? Now let's thank our speaker again. Yeah, thank you very much.